Pruning is a process that we've used to open up the trees for better light penetration and to manage the canopy within its space. But in addition, a product of pruning that we often don't think about is that it's a process of reducing the number of flower buds. Every branch that we cut off has flower buds on it. And so we are reducing the number of flower buds with our normal pruning. What we're asking here is that we prune to a specific flower bud number, not just until the tree looks good to us with our experienced horticultural eye. This requires you to know how many flowers, how flowering spurs you should leave. And I hasten to want to clarify here, we're talking about flowering spurs, not flowers on lateral buds on one year wood. And sometimes people get that number in their head also and they start counting those, but generally we thin off most of those through thinning. We're interested only in the flowering spurs. With Gala, we recommend leaving a few extra insurance buds because of the possibility of frost or poor pollination. 50% extra insurance buds is plenty in New York. If you leave more than that, you often end up with too many fruits and too small a fruit size. So if we take the number from the previous slide of 113 apples that we want on a typical tall spindle gala tree planted at three by 11, multiply it by 1.5, we should be leaving 170 spurs. Now I wanna emphasize that number, it's less than 200. Often gala trees will have four to 500 spurs uh, flowering spurs on them. With Honeycrisp, as we said before, the, the number of desired fruits is less, but also we've, through research, decided we need to leave more insurance buds, both to help in biennial bearing, but also because if you have too few buds, you get too large a fruit size. So we take the number 73, which is our target fruit number, and in this case, multiply it by 1.8 leaving 131 spurs. Now, if you'll look at those two numbers for Galen Honeycrisp, we're obviously leaving fewer total spurs on Honeycrisp, but we also want fewer total fruits. I want to introduce two physiological concepts right here that I don't think that I've explained that well in the past. And I hope that this will help uh, you understand why we push precision pruning so hard. The first physio physiological concept is illustrated by the figure on the right with a blue arrow showing that in the springtime at green tip, the tree mobilizes reserves of carbohydrates and hormones, particularly cytokines from the roots and moves them up in the tree. The tree also with the spring flush of growth takes up nitrogen primarily and many other nutrients and transports them up the tree. When the tree has an excessive number of buds, that amount of cytokinin and carbohydrates and nitrogen that the root system is taking up to the top is divided into many, many buds, leaving each bud with less than the optimal level of nitrogen, carbohydrates, and cytokinins. That results in weak buds. Now, weak buds have low fruit set. They also produce small fruit and weak buds are more biennial. If we can reduce the bud number through pruning, now this pruning has to be done before green tip because if the pruning is done after green tip, the tree's already pushed many of its reserves into buds that you're cutting off. Now that is a good horticultural strategy for weakening the vigor in over vigorous trees, but for trees that are mature and low in vigor, like often happens with gala, it results in pruning late in buds that already are weak, getting reserves and then cutting them off. Therefore, the pruning for gala has to be done before green tip. <clears throat> and if that's done, each of the remaining buds, this 180 buds that we're gonna leave, um, will get more nitrogen, more carbohydrates and more cytokinins resulting in more vigorous buds, larger fruit size and less biennialty. Now, a second concept that I want, to, physiological concept that I want to introduce is that if you leave a lot of buds, you end up with a lot of little fruitlets, at least from bloom until you can get them thinned off either at the 10 millimeter or by hand thinning at 30 millimeters. 
But that excessive number of fruits has a lot of seeds and every seed produces gibberellin hormone and exports it out of the seed into the bud on that same spur. Gibberellin is the anti-flowering hormone. And in fact, if you spray gibberellins at this time, you can reduce flowering the next year. But these seeds are potent factories of gibberellins and having excessive seed number on the tree by leaving too many buds causes biennial bearing. Let me use two examples with Honeycrisp. First, a Honeycrisp tree where you prune it to the recommended bud load. And I just calculated that on the previous page of 131 flowering spurs. Now, each one of those spurs will have five fruits in the, in the, in the flower cluster. And then you multiply by, by 10 seeds per fruit you come up with about 60,550 seeds on that tree starting at bloom. Now, some of them won't set and you'll thin off some of them, but you start with a lot of seeds. The second example is Honeycrisp, which was not pruned to the adequate bud load number. And often we find that uh, trees that aren't pruned heavily enough have several hundred flowering spurs on the on year. I put 219, but if you multiply that by five fruits and 10 seeds per spur, you get 10,950 seeds, almost double. And you just think about every one of those seeds producing gibberellin. And that's why when you have too many seeds, you don't get any flower initiation. This all starts with pruning and is one of the main reasons we need to reduce the number of flowering spurs on Honeycrisp to break biennial bearing. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> I show here uh, a picture on the right of a gala tree that's now mature and heavily spurred up. And if you count that, it's got way more than five or 600 flowers on it. Now, let me proceed on how to do precision pruning. With a variety like Honeycrisp, it's not so easy to know whether you have a high percentage of spurs that are floral or if you're in an off year and you have a low percentage. Therefore, to do precision pruning properly, you have to cut buds on some re representative trees to see if they're floral or vegetative. Our recommendation is to take two branches, one upper and one lower, from each of five re representative trees. Take those into your office and with a razor blade dissect vertically down through the bud and look at it under a microscope and see if it's floral or vegetative. Now this is not always so easy to do, but uh, our extension specialist in Northern New York, Mike Baisdell has made a nice little video on how to do this and I give you the website there. From that uh, visual examination of branches under the microscope, we calculate what percent of the spurs are floral. And again, I emphasize here, we're only cutting spurs. We're not cutting lateral buds on one year wood. We do include the terminal bud on every shoot because it can also be floral. Then we multiply the target fruit by some insurance factor. And then in the case of Honeycrisp, it's 1.8 and then divide by the fraction of buds that are floral. So I give two examples. And Honeycrisp tree in the on year, we've already calculated that our target number is 73 fruits per tree. But you multiply that by 1.8, we come up with this 131 spurs that we talked about. But in an on year, let's say 90% of those are floral. So we would divide 131 by 0.9 and we'd leave only 146 spurs. If they were all floral, we'd leave only 131 spurs. But in the off year, look at what happens to this. Our target stays the same at 73 multiplied by 1.8 for 131. But if only 30% of those spurs are floral, you have to divide 131 by 0.3, you get 437, which is a high number of spurs to leave. So that in the off year, if you can know by cutting buds in the winter, what fraction or floral you can either prune aggressively in the on year, or sometimes in the off year, not prune at all, or prune very, very lightly. So that part becomes critical with Honeycrisp. Now, how do you physically go to the orchard and do this kind of pruning? With a tall spindle orchard, it's quite simple. You simply follow the tall spindle initial rules, and that is to eliminate one or two branches that seem to be larger than three quarters of an inch in diameter. If you prune a tall spindle repeatedly with this procedure, there usually aren't more than two branches that are big, often only one. After you remove that one to two branches that are large, then you columnarize or simplify the remaining branches by cutting off 
on each branch any secondary branches. We leave spurs and we leave short shoots, but we cut off anything that could be considered a lateral branch on those branches off the trunk. Then if we still need to remove more spurs, we simply cut spurs off, artificial spur extinction. And we keep doing that until we reach our target bud number. Now, Mario and I made a video last spring. At the moment, it's not so easy to determine whether you've reached the target bud number. It requires physical counting of some trees. Now, a good strategy that I like is to require the people doing the pruning to stop every hundredth tree and count it. And then write on a little tag on that tree how many burrs they left. And then this quality control person managing the crew can check those trees to see if pruning the severity should be adjusted to achieve the target bud number. In New York, a study that I did a few years ago showed that in many cases, most Honeycrisp orchards were too high in bud load. Remember, we wanted a ratio of about 1.8. There were only two orchards out of 14 that were at 1.8 or less. All the others were above with an average of about three times the number of flowering spurs that we need to have the proper bud load. This means that in the on year, most New York growers are not pruning enough on Honeycrisp. I emphasize that in the off year, perhaps you don't prune at all. It depends on the number of flower buds you have. We've suggested in a newsletter article, uh, well, last year and again this year, that you delay pruning of Honeycrisp and possibly Fuji until after green tip, when you can really see how many floral buds there are. Sometimes it's difficult at this stage to determine which are floral. It's very doable with a microscope, but if you just want to wait, you can do all the pruning of Honeycrisp after green tip when you can count more easily the number of floral buds. Even if you do Honeycrisp pruning right now, prune lightly and then go back and readjust between green tip and full bloom to get down to the target bud number. <laughs>